I'm Jean Wells and welcome to the studio again. I hope you enjoyed uh, learning how to cut without rulers. I have to tell you I adore the technique and I've found so many ways to use it. As I was designing, I realized how I really wanted some very narrow um, inserts. So I've developed a technique for creating these wonderful little jewels. And I find they're like a brush stroke when you're working with your design. Let me show you how I go about this. I'm going back to the piece I started on in the other um, presentation. You want to think about contrast when you're choosing your colors for your composition. This really narrow, narrow insert is what we'll be doing. And if I didn't have a high contrast fabric in here, it really wouldn't show later on. And you don't want to go to all that work and not have it show. You can see here how the red one works. And I even made it disappear right in here, which is a very fun idea. Now look up here. You can see several kind of joined together here. So pay attention to the contrast that I'm using as well as the technique. You begin by making another gentle curve cut on your piece you're working on. So I, I made my cut. And my insert is going to be this light color. And I want a 3 4 inch wide strip. So you can lay a ruler on to cut that strip. Or you could eyeball it if you want. Now, you're thinking, how is this straight strip going to fit this curve? Well, it's only three quarters of an inch wide, and there's enough wiggle room with a piece of fabric that it is going to be able to fit on there. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, take your um, three quarter inch wide strip and begin the same way you did when we did the gentle curve. And I'm matching up half inch at a time and then I hold the top fabric up with my left hand and my right hand maneuvers the bottom fabric so they lay right on top of each other. You see here I'm going around a little curve. Notice this little bubbles you get? It's because I'm going around a curve. I'm going to use my bunny tail again and I always do this at the beginning and the ending of a seam because then I don't need to lift up the presser foot and trim threads after every seam. The next step is to draw your stitching line on for the next seam and look at what you can see here on this red piece. This would have been the seam I just stitched right here. Then I'm going to take either a chalk pencil, you know, a light colored pencil, or you can use a lead pencil for a darker color, and I'm going to draw on my fabric this next stitching line that you can see right here. And notice how there's a different distance here than there is here. It's closer together, further apart, here it's a little further apart, then it comes back in. That makes it much more interesting. It's more of an organic line, something that you might see in nature. So I'm going to just sketch it on. And you want to make sure that you don't ever go more than a quarter inch away. And you can see, you know, this isn't like a exact, exact line. I think you can see this. So this is going to be my stitching line. Now at this point, I need to cut a quarter inch beyond the pencil line. And I'm going to eyeball this. Because this gives me my cutting line for the next strip when it gets added. So 
So we take that away and I'm going to turn it over because we want right sides facing when we cut the next strip. I'll slide this under. Now I'm going to use this line as my pattern to cut the gray strip. And one of the reasons I like to have you always stand up when you are doing your cutting is that you have even amount of pressure. I know lots of quilters like to sit in their chair and cut, but by the time you cut, your rotary cutter gets to the end of that seam, there's hardly any pressure, and you aren't going to get as nice of a line with this technique. So I take the strip on the right, and normally, I would sew on this side when I do the gentle curve piecing, but I'm going to take and flip it over because I want to sew right on the pencil line. So we'll go to the machine now and sew that seam. Begin by laying the two fabrics right sides together, raw edges on top of each other. Make sure you have about a half inch to an inch, and you're not going to worry about the rest of the seam yet. And I'm going to sew right on the pencil line. And I keep relining up with that, you know, left hand holding the top fabric and the right hand maneuvering the bottom. So through the bunny tail. I'm always anxious to turn it over and see what I got. So here we go. And you see that little bit of beige in there. And notice on these, see how I lost a little bit of the red here? That's because that second seam was sewn right beside the first seam. And that's how you end up with the dip disappearing seam. You can see here, this two stitching lines together. And when you press this seam, you're going to press it away from the seam you just uh, sewed. Because if I try to press it this way, it's too much fabric sitting on top of each other. And this way, um, the, you get this nice open area. And when you look at it, it will sit down in between the two. It's like a crack in the rocks, if you want to think about it that way. Isn't that fun? I love how these turn out. They add so much character um, to your compositions. And you'll see in this quilt, which is the cover for my revised edition for intuitive color and design that will be out in June. And I used a lot of the narrow inserts to really pull the eye around on this piece. And you can see they're different widths. It gets narrower and then a little bit wider. Um, the red one here ends at that point, which means you just sew right next to that last seam and that way it will disappear. Thank you for watching today. Next time I'm going to show you how to do detail piecing, which is these little elements you're seeing in this quilt. Hi. <laughs> Sorry.